Okay, here is section three. And of course, what I forgot to say with section two was take a look at those three relationships that you wrote down and see how you went through the various stages and see if you can figure out what stage you're at in that relationship right now. Did you look at any relationships that have actually terminated? Did you see how you went through those stages? If you had a relationship that was a little bit rocky and it's now more on more solid footing, what did you do to get back into uh, uh, possibly into relational maintenance? Okay, so now we're going to look at another way of looking at relationships and the dynamics of a relationship. It's a little more challenging, but I think it's ultimately more useful, and it's called dialectical tensions. And the idea is that at any point in a relationship, whether it's new, whether it's been going on for five years or 50 years, whether it's in what we would think of as an integrating stage, whether it's more circumscribing, what's happening is there are two opposing forces that exist at the same time. And this, oops, it's hard to minimize this thing. And this chart looks at, it can be an internal dialectical tension, which means it's between the two people in the relationship, or it can be an external, which means it's between the people in the relationship and the outside world. Okay, and there are three dialectics. The first one is the integration. It's how much do we, do we, are we together and how much are we apart? So the connection autonomy is I want to do things together. You want to do our own things. So there's, there's this push and pull in the relationship. If we look at the external, the inclusion seclusion, it might be something like, um, we were newly married and for our first Thanksgiving, we want to spend it um, just being the two of us and so we want to be secluded. And of course, our families are saying, no, you must come to Thanksgiving with us. So that's this inclusion, seclusion, push and pull. Another dialectical tension is the stability change dialectic. How much do things stay the same? How much are they different? So within the relationship, there could be one person who likes to do things the same way and another person who says, let's do something different. I always think of um, me, I like to do the same thing on vacation every year and my kids always, that was predictability. My kids always wanted to do something new and novel and I win because I pay the bills. Okay, the external uh, iteration of this is convent conventionality uniqueness. Whereas maybe the people in the relationship want to do their own thing. They they like change and, and the outside world expects them to be a little bit more conventional. Right. And the third dialectic is expression privacy. How, how open are you or uh, do you share a lot or do you keep things to yourself? So within the people in the relationship, there can be uh, how much do you do you talk about, let's say it's a romantic relationship, how much do you talk about past romantic relationships or how much or how closed are you? And the same thing can happen in the external, which is how much, how much do you tell your family about what you and your friends do? Do you reveal or do you conceal? Okay, so remember, at any point in a relationship, these these dialectical tensions can be happening. They're not bad, it's just, it's what happens. The question is, how do we deal with them? Okay, and there are a lot of strategies for them. And I am I am going to do this as if it's it is a couple that's, uh, in a romantic relationship. Okay, so the first strategy that people sometimes use is denial. We don't, problem, what problem? Okay, where there's, you deny there's a problem and you stick to one end of the, the spectrum where I say, okay, well, we're going to do everything together. Even though I hate monster trucks, I'm going to go to that rally because I think that the connection is so crucial. Okay, 
Sometimes instead there's disorientation where you, you feel just completely overwhelmed by the situation and you, you, you know, you stick your fingers in your ear, la la la, I'm not listening. So <clears throat> you might say, okay, I thought that marriage meant doing everything together. He doesn't want to come to yoga class with me. This means that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously it's a little, it's a little, little extreme. Okay. Alternation can be, sometimes you do, you, you are you're more open and sometimes you're, you're more private or we're still doing the connection autonomy. This weekend, we'll spend the whole weekend together and next weekend we'll do our own thing. Okay. Segmentation means you're going to say each part of the relationship, uh, you're, you're going to be at a different side of the dialectic. So uh, we'll go grocery shopping and do house stuff together. But when we go to the movie, we go to the movies with friends instead of doing going to the movies together. Because I'm not going to watch another war movie. Okay. <clears throat> balance, which you would think is a great idea. But our textbook keeps saying that balance is not a good thing because it's compromise. And they don't like the compromise. Compromise, they think of as everyone giving up something. But, so, uh, for example, I want to spend every weekend together and he wants to hang out with his friends. So what we'll do is we'll both hang out with his friends. And in that case, nobody's happy because I'm not interested in smoking cigars and playing poker and they don't want me there cramping their style. Okay. The last three are the ones that I guess ideally we want to be aiming towards. Not necessarily easy. And I can maybe pay lip service to them. I don't know that I could do these myself. Okay. So in integration, you accept that there are, this is just so what is going to, this is, blah, 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 blah. accept the opposing forces without diminishing them. Okay. So here's my solution. Uh, we want to go to the movies together, but I am not going to see the war movie and he, he is not going to see the romantic comedy. So we'll go to the movies together. We'll see different movies with our friends and then we'll go out to dinner together. Okay. So that's a way of, we, we are realizing that it exists and we're going to deal with it. The next two, honestly, I can't really. Okay. Recalibration is reframing the issue so that the contradiction disappears. So you might say, it's not that we're together all the time or we're apart all the time. We spend time apart so that when we're together, it's time is more special. That sounds nice. And then the last one, reaffirmation, which is tensions exist and we should embrace the challenge of the tensions. Yes, when I am a more evolved person, I will do this. Um, in any relationship, there are highs and lows, and we need to see that this is just part of life. Okay, so these are things that we can do. Is it easy to do them? Um, I'm not sure. So what I want you to do now is to think about just one of the three people that you wrote down and go through, or you could use all of them, go through and figure out, let me back up, Whoops. Which of the tensions do you, have you experienced both internally, you know, between you and the person, other person in the relationship or externally, the two of you against the outside world. One thing I forgot to mention, students are always asking, can this be a tension within yourself? And I would say, of course, but remember this is interpersonal communication. So what's happening, you know, like, oh, you know, this openness, closeness, how much do I share? How much do I keep private? That, that doesn't enter into it necessarily. It is what's happening between the two people who are involved in the relationship. All right. So now we are done with this section and we could take another break.